the 1996 Porsche 911 Turbo. Everybody, this is one of the modern classics that you can buy today, but let me tell you this, it is not that cheap of a price. I'm Jay, and welcome to Carbo's Unboxing Reviews, and what I have for you, yes, this is the 993 generation of the 911 Turbo. We're going to talk all about it today. Uh, I saw this on the dealership lot over at uh, Los Gatos Luxury Cars. I want to thank them for letting me come on down and film, uh, and I just wanted to share this car with you because it's just so ridiculously cool, and it uh, it just brings me back to a time when supercars or uh, high-performance uh, sports cars for that matter were maybe a little more analog and not uh, full of all the electronic gizmos and other sorts of driving aids. Um, now obviously this is the uh, 993 generation. This is the actually the last of the air-cooled uh, Porsche 911s, meaning uh, starting in, you know, I believe in 1997 is when the 996 uh, 911 Carrera came out with an all-new body shell platform and a water-cooled engine. So the 993 generation uh, is very special here. But let's start off the engine here so that you can hear an air-cooled engine. So yes, that that engine is pretty loud, and uh, one of the reasons why Porsche switched from air-cooled to water-cooled flat sixes is because of increasingly stringent emission standards, uh, noise regulations, and for greater performance and overall refinement. Uh, the time had just finally come. Those air-cooled engines dated back to before World War II, and they just sort of kept evolving them and evolving them, and uh, yeah, water-cooled was just uh, the way things had to go, and that's the way it still is today. And like I said, this is the still uh, of the original uh, body shell 911, but it, it's quite different here. You're going to take a look at it. See the front headlights, for example, they're swooped uh, more uh, backwards, kind of flat to allow for better aerodynamics. Uh, this particular uh, 996 uh, or 993 911 turbo, rather, um, it, it does have a few uh, modifications. These, uh, I don't believe these are stock wheels. I know what the stock wheels look like on the 993-911, and these are definitely not them. And uh, you'll notice in a moment at the front end, it looks like there's a front uh, spoiler that's been added as well. And they call this color red. Uh, to me, it's definitely more of a burgundy uh, of color here, but it has these 8-inch alloy wheels, uh, power steel sunroof, intermittent window uh, wipers, uh, aftermarket wheels, obviously. And uh, wow, there, you have that massive whale tail rear spoiler, which actually also helps to increase downforce. Now, compared to the standard 993-911 Carrera, the turbo features uh, like a widened rear uh, wheel arches by about six centimeters, I believe, and redesigned front and rear bumpers, kind of similar to what uh, the, they're doing today with uh, the current 911 Turbo compared to the 911 Carrera. But man, look at that rear wing. It's just, wow. It, it looks ridiculously cool, and I think especially from a side view, it makes this car just really, really stand out. And I still love the look of the old, original body shell 911. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, um, if we're up to me, if I had a choice between this 993 uh, 911 Turbo and a brand new 911 Turbo, I think I might have to go for this one. It's just, I don't know, it, it's still very refined, but there's just something about old air-cooled 911s that I really love, and I know 911 purists love them too. You're seeing these air-cooled 911s, uh, increasingly go up in value. When I get to pricing for this vehicle, you're going to understand uh, even more what I mean. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about this uh, famous air-cooled engine here. Okay, so this is a 3.6 liter twin turbocharged, twin intercooled flat six with 400 horsepower at 5,750 5, uh, 5, uh, RPM and 400 pound-feet of torque at 4,500 RPM. Now, flat six, that, what does that mean? It, 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 it means it's horizontally opposed in the rear engine bay. And in the case of the 993-911, power goes to all four wheels through a six-speed manual. And the engine was actually completely redone on new uh, turbochargers uh, from the previous 964 generation 911 Turbo. And believe it or not, this is the same all-wheel drive system from the 993 Carrera 4, which itself was derived from the Porsche 959. That means this was the first 911 Turbo to feature all-wheel drive. Also makes this car very special. 
And if you notice, the, uh, the turbos, they're arranged in a one per cylinder bank to blow pressurized air through massive air-to-air -air intercoolers before funneling into a single throttle body and through the intake manifolding. Pretty cool. Again, leave it to Porsche to be all really high tech in terms of engineering uh, abilities here. Now the interior, uh, this is sort of like a dark gray leather that you can see. It's got front sport seats, uh, these uh, <laughs> barely usable but split bench rear seats here. Um, the rear seat backs there, the where you put your back against, they fold flat. So it's kind of better just for storing a suitcase uh, or a small bag on top of it instead. But just look at the, uh, the the overall interior here, the dash design compared to a brand new modern 911. Uh, yeah, this definitely goes back to about you know 1963 when the 911 first came out. It's very simple. Um, it, th there's really no style to it, but that's what I like about it. it it's no nonsense. Now, there are some options that were available in the 993-911, uh, which is really cool. Again, this was back in 1996, so bear with me. Uh, Six-disc remote CD changer. Try not to be too excited. A hands-free cell phone. Heated front seats and sport bucket seats as well. Again, all those things. Cell phone. Uh, Six-disc remote CD changer. That was really cool in 1996. And I love these gauges here. Just... It's just analog goodness to me. Uh, you know, today's 911. It's 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 a great car, but it's just so advanced and so many electronic drivers' aids. Um, I kind of like the stuff from yesteryear. There's something really charming about it. The, the, it's cars like the 993, 911 is what I remember as a kid. They were, it was one of the cars that was on, as a poster on my bedroom wall, along with a 959. So it, it, you know, it it brings me back to that area of, of my youth. Now, some of the standard safety this thing comes with is uh, four-wheel ABS brakes. Uh, nice cup holder right there. That's a, yeah, kind of a cool touch, but it's there. Uh, driver and front passenger airbags, front fog, driving lights. Um, you know, that's about it. Again, it, this is before the era of all the safety technologies were really coming into play. So even having dual front airbags was pretty, pretty substantial even in 1996. Yeah, and I do like having a sunroof there. That's a, yeah, it's kind of a cool thing. It's a power steel sunroof. You got your uh, regular standard, barely usable glove box. Again, it, it, it's, it's just a, such an old design. And you have your six-speed manual right there. This is just a fantastic gearbox. Uh, as you probably already know, uh, Today's 911 Carrera, you can get it with a 7-speed manual, but Porsche's really pushing those PDK dual clutches um, just because they're better for fuel efficiency and performance, but it, in my opinion, they also take something away from the driving experience. Speaking of which, how does this thing drive? Well, compared to the 993-911 Carrera, the ride is it's a little more harsh, um, but in the hands of an experienced driver, this thing is just absolutely thrilling. It's got a multi-link rear suspension to help keep the rear end in place. Remember, it's rear engine, so it's going to be a little tail happy. And the acceleration, okay, 0 to 60 miles per hour in 3.7 seconds, 0 to 100 in 9.1 seconds, top speed 180 miles per hour, quarter mile 12.1 seconds and 113.1 miles per hour. Okay, that 0 to 60 time, it is faster than the legs of the Ferrari F12 TR, 456 GT, and the F355. Um, some American exotics of that time, uh, the Dodge Viper and the Corvette ZR1, yeah, it's faster than both those two. And it's even faster to 60 than the all-wheel drive Lamborghini Diablo VT. Uh, <laughs> at the time, in the mid to late 90s, those were the best of the best, but... This 993-911 turbo is even better. And as you can see by the, uh, the front seats here, yeah, you know, it, it's comfortable for two people up front. Uh, again, don't even bother with the rear seats. It's a tight squeeze. It's going to be uncomfortable. Um, just put a couple bags back there and leave it at that. All right, so what is some of the competition? Well, I had to kind of look this up and remind myself what was really cool back in uh, you know, the mid-90s. And the closest thing I could come to is the uh, Ferrari F355. Uh, that car is event uh, 
successor today, even though it's heavily evolved, is the uh, Ferrari 488 GTB. You know, again, mid-engined right there. Um, so yeah, I, I would put the you know, just like today the 911 Turbo and the Ferrari 488, uh, 488 excuse me, GTB are sort of competitors. Same thing goes with uh, the 993, 911 Turbo, and the uh, F355. And as you can see right there, the front, just like it is today, you have your uh, trunk storage space. So, okay, pricing. Well, back in 1996, the base price of this was about $99,000. And there was a gas guzzler tax too. Again, 32 miles per gallon in the city, 19 miles per gallon on the highway. It's not very good. So we just think a little over a hundred grand in 1996, which is already really expensive today. Just imagine it many uh, years ago. Now, this one here, obviously it does not come with a warranty. It's got about uh, 35,300 miles on its clock. It's listed at $142,000. Um, yeah, that's just proving my point right there. These air-cooled 911s, especially something as cool as, uh, let's go with that, no, no pun intended, as cool as this uh, 993-911 Turbo, they're just going to go up in value. They're special. Again, this is sort of ca called the, the, the last complete modern classic. Um it, it, it just has no, it was the beginning of the end, and it was also the first to have such as uh, all wheel drive in a Porsche 911 Turbo. All right, so what do I like here? Um, that zero to 60 miles per hour time in less than four seconds, because uh, holy crap, that's impressive even for today. Um, it drives pretty well on the road. Uh, again, in a more experienced driver, they're going to really enjoy it even more. What don't I like? Well, again, it's still expensive today, and also I'm not a particular fan of some of this particular car's aftermarket uh, front end and wheels. But I'm out of time for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Any more questions for me, just leave them in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.